If you remember from before, we talked about the effects of A, which was a vertical stretch or compression. If A was in between 0 and 1, we had a vertical compression by A. If we had A was greater than 1, we had a vertical stretch by A. And if we had A was less than 0, then we had a vertical reflection. In this video, we're going to talk about horizontal expansions and compressions. And so the new parameter that we're going to introduce is plus or minus k, which goes right in front of the x. So in the first one, if a is greater than 1, the function y equals f at x is compressed horizontally, this should be k, by a factor of 1 over k. So if k is equal to 2, then the x-coordinate is multiplied by a half. If the function y equals f at x is stretched horizontally, oh, and then if k is between 0 and 1, then the function y equals f at x is stretched horizontally by a factor of 1 over k. So for example, if k is a half, then the x-coordinate is multiplied by 2. If k is less than 0, then the graph is also reflected in the y-axis. So as a note, the x-coordinate of each point in the base function is going to be multiplied by 1 over k, or the reciprocal of what you see in the transformation expression. So let's do some examples. So the first thing that we're going to graph here is y equals f at 2x, and this is our f at x that we're looking for over here. So y equals f at x would be a horizontal compression by 1 over k, which is going to be 1 half. So what that means is that we're going to multiply each of our x-coordinates by 1 over 2. So my original points are minus 3, minus 2, 0, 5, and 4, 0. Multiplying each x-coordinate by a half is going to give me minus 3 over 2, y coordinate stays the same, 0, 5, and then 2, 0. So I now have three points that I can plot in my transform function. So minus 1.5 and minus 2 would be right here, 0 and 5 would be here, 2 and 0 would be here, and then I can connect those using my ruler. So I've got this one here, and then I've got this one going down here. So I've got a horizontally compressed function. My x values are closer together. My domain is going to go from my smallest x value to the largest, so minus 3 over 2 to 2, and my range is going to go from my smallest y value to my largest, which is 5. I have one invariant point, which is right here. We'll label it as IP for invariant point. Let's look at uh, another example. So now we're going to do y equals f to the minus 1 half x. So this is going to be a horizontal stretch by 2 or, yeah, and a horizontal reflection. If I use my table of values again, so I'm going to start off with the same one, minus 3, 0, 4, minus 2, 5, 0. Now I'm going to apply my transformation. In this case, I'm multiplying each x-coordinate by minus 2. So my y-coordinates are going to stay the same. Each of my x-coordinates are multiplied by minus 2. So I would get 6, 0, and minus 8. So now 
I've got three points that I can plot for my new transform function, which is here. So I've got 6 minus 2, 0, 5, which remains invariant, and then minus 8, 0. So what you can see is that each of my points are now further spread apart, or they've been horizontally stretched in that purple graph there. My domain, just like before, is going to be my smallest x value to my largest, so minus 8 to 6. And my range is the same thing as before, because that hasn't changed. And then I do have the same invariant point right here as 0, 5. So let's look at another example here. We're going to use the absolute value function. So the first thing that we want to do is identify the parent function. So our parent function is y equals the absolute value of x. And that is going to look like a v. We'll get the ruler out here, connecting those points to show the parent function. And over here as well, parent function of y equals the absolute value of x. Now the next thing that we want to do is state the transformation. So I have a whole number. So what I'm going to say is a horizontal compression by 1 over 4. So my points are closer together by a factor of 4. All right, so let's graph that. So we'll pick a couple points here for my table of values. I'm going to use ones that are easy to multiply by a quarter. Because I'm doing a horizontal transformation, I'm going to multiply each of my x values by a quarter. So I'm going to get minus 1, 0, and 1. And my y coordinates are going to remain the same. Now I'm going to plot those points on my graph. So minus 1, 4, 0, 0, which is invariant. And then I've got 1 and 4, which is up here. And then I'm going to use my ruler to connect those together. 1 and 2 halves of the same graph, which is the absolute value of 4x. So now I'm going to graph a reflection of the function in the x-axis. So this is actually a vertical reflection. And I'm going to write a, an equation to represent the new function. So what I'm going to do here, because it is vertical, that is my a parameter, which is always in front. So I'm going to add a negative sign there. And then I'm going to reflect my points. So minus 1, 4 to minus 1, negative 4. Same thing on the other side. And then I can draw two lines to connect those dots there. Okay, and now I've got my reflection. y equals minus 4x. And now I'm also asked to graph a reflection of the function in the y-axis, which is a horizontal reflection. And we're going to write an equation to represent it. My equation now, the negative is inside the brackets, but this is actually the exact same graph because it is symmetric about the y-axis. So it just reflects, okay? So this is also the graph of y equals negative 4x. Okay? The last thing that we're going to do is no graphing. We're going to look at the points. So the point 4, 3 is on the graph of y equals f at x. State the coordinates of the image of this point. All that means is what are the coordinates of my point after I transform the function. So my original point is 4, 3. The transformation that's happening here is a horizontal compression by a half. So then I'm multiplying my x-coordinate by a half, which means that my new point is now 2, 3. In this example here, I've got two transformations happening, a vertical stretch by 3 and a horizontal stretch by 2. So my initial point is here. 
I have a horizontal stretch by two, and I've got a vertical stretch by three. So I'm gonna multiply my X coordinate by two and my Y coordinate by three. The last thing that we're gonna do is list our, some values for K depending on the description. And so we're told that the function y equals f at x has been transformed to y equals f at kx, and we're going to determine the value of k. So a horizontal stretch, so that already tells me that k has to be between 0 and 1, and it's a factor 5. So that means that we can write k as 1 over 5. A reflection in the y-axis, k would be negative 1. And here, a horizontal compression by the factor of a half and a reflection in the y-axis, we would then write that k is going to equal minus 2. So we've got a reflection here, which is a negative, a compression, which tells me that k has to be greater than 1, and we've got our correct factor in here.